is going on. Isn't that funny that we should have an eclipse of the moon on the night that the moon is full? Is that the way it's supposed to be? Uh, we're talking about the White Plains City Court, Brian Hansberry, and a trial. Glendora versus Sadly Stevens, Burke and Burke. Uh, for ignorant lawyering and shoddy workmanship. And Glendora's on the witness stand and she's trying to recall the litany of ignorant lawyering and shoddy workmanship and Hansberry was wrong not to let her consult her preparation. That was one obstruction and the second one was he kept interrupting her with questions, with a volley of questions. And uh, the third was that the obfuscation of these questions was further acerbated by uh, they were such trivial things. Don't you see what he's trying to do? He's trying to prevent Glendora from presenting her evidence and from proving her case, which Glendora is fully capable of doing because it's all been written out. 96 counts of ignorant lawyering and shoddy workmanship by Sally Stevens, Burke and Burke, a liar for hire law firm, and by Walter A. Sarok, a liar for hire. Now, we're up to page 35, and when Sarok found that out, he sent up the affidavits and the memorandum that he forgot to enclose with his, his order to show cause, and more evidence of ignorant lawyering and sho shoddy workmanship, Glendora went on, is that the order to show cause was to be served by certified return receipt requested. He served it by overnight mail, and he never served by regular mail, and that just zaps the service. So his service was bad, and as we all know, you have to serve by regular mail, and he did not do that. Hansberry started to ask about how much money things cost, something about how much uh, are your damages in dollars. And Glenn said, well, you see, all these hours and dollars are over there in that file. It was on a docket, and it was on an odd domnum, and it was very, very clear, but he wouldn't let me go get it. But I would say I worked 15 hours on the bogus order to show cause that didn't have the affidavits in it, and that was overnight mail. And any lawyer can charge anything he wants, and I charge $300 for my time and for my expertise in, and I started to tell him, and Hansberry would not list him, he asked to whom I charge that, and I said I charge it to the person who causes me the damages. He says, you get paid $300. Glendora says, I charge $300. My expertise in public access, 34 years. My expertise in broadcast TV for 54 years. The litigation that I've done in the court since 1987. Uh, for the expertise of putting on a public access TV show to being its producer, its videographer. Uh, being the person who gets the TV stations uh, to get the show onto, the 53 TV stations, the program, and who gets it onto the two internet sites, www.chatwithglendora.com and uh, www.youtube.com. And Hansberry asked Glenn if she were an attorney, and in disdain, Glendora said, no! You know, I cannot think of a worse existence, folks, than being a lawyer or a judge. And Glendora said adamantly, I am pro se. Hansberry says, you charge $300 an hour, you have to have somebody who uh, pays you $300 an hour. And Glendora says to her heart, what is your statutory authority to require that? And, but out loud she says, I don't think so. You're a lawyer. She's talking to Hansberry, the judge. And you can charge anything you want an hour. And Hansberry gives Glenn an argument. And she says, that's what I charge. I think it's worth it and for the reasons I gave you for it. Then she goes on about uh, Saw Rock sends a second order to show cause. The first order to show cause was defeated by the court, and that shows you that it was a frivolous motion. And you said you did not, you did have jurisdiction over the uh, defendants. Glenn said something about jurisdiction here tonight. 
Well, that's frivolous, she said. I have to answer all that slop. Hansbury says, Glendora, did you bring the action? Glendora said, no. Uh, she brought the action, the order to show cause. The action was not with you, that you gave me default judgment. Which matter are you talking about? I don't know if he's talking about Glendora versus Saddley or Glendora versus Cecilia. Glendora versus Cecilia, Glendora won with a default judgment. Uh, are you talking about Glendora Masterelli? And Hansberry said Glendora versus Masterelli, but he gave up trying to uh, pronounce. <laughs> he gave up trying to pronounce Masterelli. Glendora had to laugh a little. Hansberry, <coughs> you brought the action. Glendora, correct. Hansberry, you initiated it. Glendora, correct. Glendora continued with another point, saying, I'm praying. Uh, I'm proving my case without my notes. And Sarok said he had to be served at his home. Well, isn't the law they have to be served at the last known business address? That's what the law says. And he's also wrong saying, I did the service. I did not. Your clerk did the service. And there's nothing wrong with your clerk's service. Hansberry wanted time to look up something and said so. And Glenn told, her, told him to take his time. Glenn resumed with Sarok's ignorance and shoddy workmanship. Uh, oh, that he wasn't here tonight. And I can say anything I want about him, and he is not here to refute it. Glendora told Hansbury. He claimed that uh, Cecilia Masterelli was in default because her supervisor, Sarok, is this is, uh, and he never and he never named the supervisor, it was Christine Saverino, uh, that her employer was going to do her defense for her. This is all hearsay. Everything he said is hearsay. He was not there on the original dictum, on the original action, excuse me. He came in afterwards. You know, and then the appellate term rules in Sarok's favor on the basis of this point, and the appellate term never deals with the fact that no evidence was taken, no witnesses were sworn, no testimony was given. That's the appellate term for you. We'll get to them later. Hansberry uh, defended defendants with nothing, with quoting the appellate term. Well, Glenn DeSora says, but my dear John, uh, Judge Hansberry, the appellate term is wrong. That was not a win, that was a cheat and a fraud, and I will be going after the appellate term very shortly. This is out of bounds anyhow, it's ultra virus. Hansberry is desperate for a way out, he can't find it in this case, so he runs out to another court and to another case, and this is what you call a foul ball, isn't it folks? We are up to page uh, 40. Uh, to enforce uh, something's trial, Glenn reads in the Bible as he reports his trial on February the 24th, just one month since January 4th, this trial. Glenn, now let me finish my point on this. If she had a meritorious defense, a medical defense, why didn't her and why didn't Sarah produce any medical evidence? Yeah, rather a big point, isn't it? Was anything given to you from a doctor? Hansberry covers up for them. What does this have to do with anything? Glendora says, no, 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 I'm showing. And Hansberry interrupts, I'm showing you that. That was a lie. He did not have a meritorious defense. And the reason I said, and Hansberry interrupts again, and he would not Glendora finish. She has, uh, she was making too strong a point. And then the so-called attorney for Saddley, uh, Zoe Jasper, uh, rushed in to uh, rescue Hansberry and was allowed a long time without any upper interruption. And this is the middle of my testimony. Glendora denied uh, what uh, Zoe Jasper said and pointed out there was no proof. 
how come an attorney is allowed to interrupt Glendora's testimony being taken by Hansbury. Glendora said to Hansbury, I passed that a long time ago. And then she continued, I was saying where I was damaged is he claimed he had a meritorious defense and I pointed out that he didn't. Uh, he did not produce Christine Savarino to say that she said uh, the company and then Hansbury interrupts again. And Glendora says, number one order to show cause, to tell Hansberry where she is proving her case. I'm proving, and Hansberry interrupts again. That was, and Hansberry interrupts again. Glendora, it's, 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 it's a hearsay. And I am moving, and I am proving in Glendora versus Sally that the ergs and dollars and time that Sawrock caused me, Glendora, versus Cecilia, whether the appellate term says so or not, I had to refute his lies, and that cost me herbs, time, and dollars. Hansberry continues his, his pro-defendants and con Glendora uh, defense of them with a gobbled question, and Glendora cannot decipher it, and she says, Wait a second, what does that mean? He said it again. Glendora said, they had a responsibility to me to put an intelligent legal papers into this court. And it's public policy, Brian Hansbury. That is public policy. Hansbury asked Glendora if she is protesting they put in out lousy papers. Glendora says, they did put out lousy papers and you denied everything that they asked for. Hansberry asks another question and Glendora says, if you will let me get my notes, I'll tell you. Then Glendora said, let me go on. The first order to show cause a motion to face gate was denied. Hansberry interrupts again. You see what he does repeatedly? He's trying to keep me from my notes, from the figures, from the hours and the dollars. And uh, he tries to also keep me from saying, uh, proving my case by constantly interrupting me. Glendora tells Hansberry that this is what she is doing. When it was denied, Sarah came up with a second order to show cause, and it was for the very same relief. And you do not ask the court for the same relief twice. Now, is that Hansberry obstructs again? He defends Sarah. He, he turns out to be their defense counsel. A judge turns out to be their defense counsel. Glendora said, and you ruled it was. And Hansberry said, that press ruled it was. Glenn said, okay, press. And that's another thing in this court. You lose continuity. Press is another part-time judge in the White Plains City Court. You shouldn't have two judges or three judges. You should have just one judge. Hansberry defends with they have four judges and they all read the files. And Glendora doubts that very much. Glendora continues with, anyway, my point is that is ignorant and shoddy lawyering. And Hansberry asks, what duty do they Oh, Glendora. Well, didn't I just say that, folks? Didn't I just say they owe a duty to hand in decent papers that don't have to be refuted and a whole bunch of lies and cost me so much work? Glendora answers, they owe me the duty of sensible, grown-up legal papers and not kid stuff. Hansberry says, why? And that's kid stuff, too. Glendora says, because they're in the business of justice, law, and the courts. I paid my money to get justice. He, Hansberry interrupts, Glenn. I paid you a, a $20. Hansberry said, Glenn did not pay him. She paid the court. Glenn said, well, you are the court. And Hansberry said, I am a judge of this court. There was something about, uh, we all know where the money went. And Glendora says, don't you see, I was damaged by the first order to show cause no affidavits and memorandum of law. Hansberry said no. 
and it's easy to see where Hansberry is going and Glenn says I had to do it all over again Hansberry misses the obvious point and Glenn Sor Glendora says I had to do it over again and this cost me money to do it over again time Hansberry said how much Glendora said it's over in the file over there Hansberry asked how many boxes Glendora said one and Glenn tells him that the hours and the dollars are on the back page she tells him he also has it in his file, and Hansberry said something if Glendora were a lawyer. And Glendora said, Sir, I would not be a lawyer for any money in the world. I am a pro se. Keep going to the last page. Next to the last page. Well, he can't find it. And Glenn asks, May I see the papers? And he said, No. Then may I go to my box? And he said, Yes. And I went to my box and I found the papers and Glenn, I went through the file and I pulled out the receipts, the logs, the exhibits showing the hours and dollars that the poor workmanship of Sawrock, Sadley, Stevens, Burke and Burke cost Glendora. Ignorant lawyering and shoddy workmanship. She hands in a copy for the judge and she hands in a copy for Jasper and it is three volumes. And in that is the odd dominant, and in that is the docket. And it shows the hours and the dollars that their ignorant lawyering and shoddy workmanship cost. Now going through the box, Glendora says, Judge Hansberry, do you have a copy of the odd dominant in your file? Glendora says, that's the only thing you can get in a small claims court is substantive damages. And Hansberry retracted his statement then that he did not rule on the jurisdiction against Sara. He said apparently while Glendora is looking through her papers he found his signed order. Glenn told him you also ruled against Sara on CPLR 32117A that he should uh, never be used in small claims court and that is another point that Glendora failed to state a claim upon which relief can be granted. And that's another case of ignorant lawyering and shoddy workmanship. And Hansberry is stony silence. And Zoe Jasper starts talking to Hansberry and asks her what she thinks of the receipts, the logs, and the exhibits. And in self-interest she denigrates them, but she didn't know that the evidence was right there in her hands. She was holding the odd dominum that gave the hours and the dollars, and she was holding the docket that gave the hours and the dollars. Glendora says, there are plenty of receipts in there, and Hansberry gets angry, and Glendora said, I have to answer your question. Hansberry asked Glendora a question about the contents and Glendora said she would have no have to reserve on that. I think I do. I think I have the docket in there. I wanted to go through this case from top to bottom and show you where I was damaged by ignorant lawyering and shoddy workmanship. I wanted to show you one step at a time and Glendora should move for a retrial. I said to myself then, Hansberry said, is there anything else you want to tell the court? And Glendora said, oh yes, there's a whole lot more. I have to deal with the fact that not one defendant is brave enough to be here tonight to face the music. And Hansberry defended the defendants for not being there. And Glendora asked him, on what grounds? And Hansberry covered up for them again. And Glendora said, then let me ask counsel these 20 questions I have and Hansberry flew into an access of fury. You don't ask questions. You don't ask counsel anything. And he covered up for her again. Do you see, I'm asking you, to what crooked lengths that these judges will go in open court to protect the establishment and their closed union shop and the public interest, justice, truth are kicked aside do you see that, folks?
When Dora says to Hansberry, is she going to testify? And the answer is not yes. Glenn Dora says, well, how can these people be on trial and not show up at trial? And there's no answer. Glenn Dora says, to be examined. And Hansberry covers up for them. And Glenn Dora says, are you going to take that into your decision? And Hansberry says, no, I'm not going to tell you what my decision is. Well, that wasn't the question I asked him. Hansberry continues with no I guess with no answers to my questions. Now you see, folks, what a racket we have here. We have a court and his job is to ascertain the truth. And he's covering up. Don't tell me that a court's job is not to ascertain the truth. It is. Get around that one. Glenn, how can I prove to you, my case to you, if I can't get answers from these defendants? And Hansberry says, you have your testimony and you have your own documentation. And Glendora gets up to go get the record and then Hansberry explodes. I got up from the witness stand to go get my record. And he had an access of fury. He had an outburst. He exploded. And Glendora says, but I'm going to get the net record. And he says, you are a witness in this court. And he screamed. And he says, you do not just get up and go. Well, Glendora says, you told me I could go get my box. Hansberry, that was 15 minutes ago. <laughs> Glendora says, no. The thing that are in my box, I want to prove to you. And Hansberry asked something about something. And Glendora says, I think I did. He said, did you request it? And I said, I think I did. And Hansberry refused to allow Glendora's box into the witness stand. Peter Lane did not. Hansberry offers water and Glendora shifts, says, yes, water would be very good, Judge Hansberry. And Hansberry says, well, I'm not offering it to you, I'm offering it to counsel, because counsel seems to have a cough. Well, no, isn't that great? Isn't that, he's so nice to take care of counsel, isn't he? Then Hansberry said, did Glendora want to go get her box? <laughs> Glendora said, no, I'd like to have it brought to me. I also need a table, Judge Hansberry. Well, the water incident, folks, clearly showed Glendora and her five court monitors that she had with her. Where Hansberry's solicitude was. It was obvious he'd already made up his mind for personal reasons. If you go through the file, you will find out that never once did Mr. Sarok defend against the claim of an honest merits. Everything was procedural. Hansberry defends Sarok. Glenn, the point is that you should see that he had no defense and therefore you should rule in my favor. And Hansberry grunts. And Glendora says he never defended on the merits. They never once says, no, our work is not shoddy. No, our work is not ignorant. They never did that. Never once did they defend on the merits. What's that show you? That they have no defense. That Glendora is right. They damaged her by her, their shoddy workmanship and their ignorant lawyering. And so Glendora is making that point, that he never defended on the merits. And here's what Hansberry says. However he did it, he won and you lost. He's referring to the appellate term, the big cheat. How's that for a judge at the bench in a trial? How's that? Let me say it to you again. However Sarok did it, he won and you lost, which is not true. 
for one thing. And if it were true, it's no place to say that. It's unbelievable. How can anybody be this depraved? Like the thief on the cross next to Christ, folks, I'm telling you, who said, we will pay for the evil deeds we've done. Glendora says, I did not lose. I won. I won Glendora versus Cecilia Masterelli, and I'm trying to win Glendora versus Satterley. I'm not here to talk about the appellate turn. I'm here in this court to talk about Glendora versus Satterley. And the point, and I'll say it again, that I'm trying to bring to you, is that he had no meritorious defense. He never once went through the record. He never once defended against it. Hansbury went off this case again, and it was another foul ball. And he was in defense of the defendants. Glendora, I didn't have to, look, I didn't have to go through all this. I sit here and I watch you, I'm telling Hansbury, at trial, and I watch you call small claims cases. And somebody comes in with a complaint, and you send out a summons. And then they come in, and you say to them, do you want to arbitrate, mediate, or do you want a trial with a judge? And that's all. If they want a trial with a judge, they come back after the trial date is set, which is a year away. And that's all you had to do, I told him, in my case. You did not have to go through all this motion practice. If Sawrock wanted to try, okay. We don't come back again until a year later when the trial date is set. We did not have to go through all this stupid motion practice. And Hansberry should have put a stop to that. This was small claims. Simplified, inexpensive, and speedy. And that's Hansberry's fault as much as it is Sawrock's and Saddley's fault. Handling, so Hansberry says, oh, we have a civil rights case here? No way! This is a small claims rights case. But we do have a civil rights case here, I'm telling you parenthetically, because Hansberry is a state actor. He works for the governor of the city of White Plains. That makes him liable to Glendora for any civil rights that he violates. Under Title 42 of the United States Code, Section 1983, Civil Rights, and also Section 1985, Conspiracy. We have a perfect civil rights case against Hansbury. Glendora says no. <clears throat> It's not a civil rights case. It's a Section 1801 Uniform City Court Act. I have a right, like any of these other people, to say that I want a trial, and that's it. And do I have to put in 500 or 600 hours and dollars and dollars? No, I don't. He never should have been allowed to do this. This was all small claim stuff. Orders to show cause and all these things. Uh, appearances. We come down here every time it costs us $100 to come down here. Well, it's more like $200. And I don't drive, and I have somebody to drive me, and then I take my people out to dinner, and I don't have to go through all that. I could see, I could have it all done the, what, the way the people here tonight have it done. They come in, they ask him, do you want to mediate, arbitrate, or have a trial by a judge? I want a trial by a judge. Come back in a year, or you'll hear from the court when the trial is scheduled. While you were out in your chambers, they asked them to do, do you want to mediate, arbitrate, or, or have a trial? And then they don't have to come back for a year. And you allowed all this Hansberry, all of this motion practice, and that's in violation of 1801 of the uh, Uniform City Court Act, small claims. Does Hansberry say anything? No. And he says to Zoe, 
Jasper. Do you have any questions? Glendora says, one moment. 